Today it's about printing, why you should print and why I think it can make you a better photographer. Welcome to the little studio. It's a new year. I just got back from five weeks in Europe and I've been printing some of my photographs from Europe and I thought it was a perfect time to go through the reasons why I print, why I like to print and why I think you should print too. I think it's super important for photographers to print their photographs. I think it's the last step. It's the last important step in making work. Your images look a lot different on the computer screen than from an actual print. When, once you see an actual print, you really start to get a sense of the depth of the, the print, if a print really works or not, the tones of a print. And I think when you go back into the field after you've printed, you start to think more about these things. You shoot a little bit more deliberately, you think about the light a little more. There's a lot of reasons why I think printing is a really good thing for you to do. Now, some of you may just take photographs and you're gonna post them on your Instagram, and then that's fine. But I also think there's a lot of people that take a lot of photographs, a lot of photographs of their family of important events, and then they sit on computer hard drives and oftentimes I've heard horror stories of people losing hard drives, losing photographs and not getting anything back. I think there's going to be a lost generation of images where we don't see pictures of our kids that from age three to age six because we lost them all on our hard drive. Whenever we have a family event, I almost always make a set of four by six prints and my wife puts them in little albums from Christmas time, from trips that we've been on. I think printing is a really important step in your photography. A couple of things that I do with prints is I gift prints uh, a lot of times. I'll give them to my friends, I'll give them a small print or a bigger print, and it goes a long way. Same with your subjects. With your subjects, after I photograph them, I'll give them a print. And again, it's gone a long way in my career and in work where I've gifted somebody a photograph and they always remember it. It's really special, even more so than sending them a quick text or a quick email with a photograph, which they like and they can post as well. But when they get a print or when you get a little print, uh, you know, a lot of times I've seen my prints framed up in people's houses and that's really a special thing to see when you walk into someone's house and you see one of your photographs framed up there. As well as your own house. I have a lot of photographs uh, as you can see in the back here. A lot of them aren't mine but photographs of other people and to me, uh, you know, that's little pieces of artwork that I can get lost in and I can see and I can revisit. We have a great print that we that my wife and I bought when we were in Greece and I have it framed up and it's downstairs. And it was this wonderful photographer that I met. He had this great studio on the island of Naxos and I bought one of his prints because my wife and I were having this great day of driving through the island and we stopped in this little town. We had a great lunch and it was this really cool artist town. And we discovered this photographer and we bought his print. I'll actually leave a link to his work below. We bought one of his prints and now we walk by all the time. We've been looking at it and we've had people come over and say, hey, look at that print, that's great. And we have a little story of where it came from. So prints are, to me, kind of the final product of photography. You really have to print, and I don't mean you have to print every single photograph you ever take. I mean, we take way too many. I take way too many photographs all the time. There's no way you could print every single photograph, but the process of printing pictures and picking out certain ones that really highlight a trip or really mean something to you or someone else, I think can be a very important step in your photography. And like I said, I really, really think that you can learn a lot from printing your own photographs and having them and studying them as well. So one of the things that I do editorially when I'm working on a big book project or a big magazine project or a big newspaper project is I make work prints. You can see my big stack of work prints here. So I use a really cheap paper. This is just the ink press paper for 
uh, $15, you can buy 50 sheets of five by seven paper. And then I make work prints. I make, uh, you know, whether it's shot digitally or whether it's shot on film and it's scanned up into my computer, I will make a work print and then I travel around with these prints. These are prints just for me to take a look at and to go through and kind of see where I sit on a project. I will go through these photographs and oftentimes I'll travel with these prints as well and I'll lay them out and I'll take a look at them and it gives me a sense of where I am in the project, where I need to be what pictures go together with one another and sometimes you see a photograph and you think man i need a picture i need a different picture to go with one that i have already so making work prints is a really important step for me in creating a project in creating a body of work towards the end of a project once you're getting into the layout stage into the layout stage of a book or a magazine or into sequencing, it's really important to be able to move these prints around. You just can't do that on a computer. You can lay it out and you can drag photos around. And I've done that many times before, but nothing really works better for me is when I can sit back and you can have a coffee and you can kind of look and you can study things and you can play around with the sequencing and where things should go. One of the important steps for me is to see what's not working. A lot of times I'll know when something is working and I'll see when something is working, but seeing what's not working is also a very important step as well. So you know not to make those same mistakes again. And if a scene like that comes up again, how do you approach it differently? What can you do differently? What should you do differently? Making those little prints can help you and can help your vision as a photographer. So that's a really critical step for me as well. As you can see here, I have a stack of different papers. This is Moab Blassel. This is Moab Juniper paper. This is Epson Exhibition Fiber. I have Hannah Mealy, uh, their bamboo paper. Canson, one of my favorite papers. I have a plantain rag. Right now, I am doing some test prints. I went to the west coast of Canada with my 5x7 camera, shot all in black and white. And I'm going to now make some really big prints for a gallery here in town. The prints are probably going to be 40 by 60 or, or 50 by 70 inches big. So these are going to be gigantic, uh, gigantic prints. One of the first steps that I'm going to do is I need to pick the paper that these uh, photographs are gonna be printed on. So I have a couple of different papers that I'm gonna try, and I'm gonna print the same photograph on each paper to see which one works, which one I like. I will put them all up on the wall, and then we'll get a better sense of which uh, paper that I think will be good for uh, this big print. And when I'm printing this big print, I'm not going to do it here in my studio. I don't have a printer that big. I'm going to send it out to get done, but I'm limited to certain paper. So I need to pick the papers that I'm uh, limited to and make test prints for that and see how it works out. The other great thing about printing is, is if you are going to approach a gallery to try to show some of your work or sell some of your work, I think having prints and going in there with a couple prints on the paper that you would actually print with so that the, ga the gallery owner can have a look at them and get a real sense of how these prints are going to look and how they're going to handle and how he's going to sell them. I think that is really an important step for a gallery owner, uh, for him or her to, to look and feel the paper and and just get a sense of your aesthetic and how you think as a photographer and your final product as a photographer going in there with an ipad or a computer they can see the image of course but they really can't see the final product and i think that's a very important step is for them to be able to hold a, an actual print and see what that actual print is going to look like now, if you're going to go down this road of printing, there's a couple big choices you need to make. What kind of printer you're going to choose and what kind of paper you're going to have to choose. 
I use an Epson P900 inkjet printer, a 17 inch, which has been an absolute great printer. I've had it for about a year now and it has been running perfectly. One of the reasons why I like this printer so much is because here in Calgary, it is extremely dusty all the time and I cover my printer up, but even, even better than that, it completely closes up as a box, so less dust will get into that printer, which is a big plus of this printer, I think. I've had zero issues with colors, uh, with lines getting blocked up, where I've had to clean the printer. The printers just work flawlessly, but we're at a point where printers are working really, really well now. Another thing you're gonna have to pick is the paper. Uh, we are living in a time where we have a lot of great choices for paper. We have luster papers and glossy papers and matte papers. We have all kinds of papers and we have burrito papers and we have plantain papers and bamboo papers and Japanese style papers. We have a lot of, lot of great choices for papers that we can, that we can pick and I still print in the darkroom and we don't have a lot of papers and a lot of choices anymore. We only kind of have a glossy or a matte uh, style choice now. So that's one of the things that I really like about inkjet printing is we have a lot of different choices of papers that we can, we can try out. One of the things I would say, one of the great things that the paper manufacturers give you is a paper sample pack. So you can get a sample pack of paper that has uh, a Beretta in it and it has a glossy and it has a matte and you have all these different choices and you can try them all out and see what works best for you. I've kind of narrowed down my choices of paper to a couple papers. I really love the Canson papers. I love their plantain paper and I love their Beretta paper. It is, I think the Canson papers are some of the nicest papers out there and for me, I love those papers. Uh, Hannah Mealy makes some great papers. We're actually gonna do a test strip, uh, a test print with a Hannah Mealy paper, a fiber base burrito paper, and we're gonna see how, uh, how that looks here today. But yeah, there's really just a ton of choices that you can uh, pick for your paper and for your final images. One of the things that I wanna take you through is actually making a print but one of the first things that you gotta do is you need to pick your paper. The paper that I've picked is the Hannah Muley uh, Burrita Fiber Base paper. And the first thing that you're gonna need to do is download the ICC profile. I'm not gonna go into you know, exactly what it does here and stuff, that's way too technical. But you have to, when you, when you choose print, you actually have to uh, pick the ICC profile of the paper to match the paper and that will give you your best results. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the Hannah Muley website and we are going to find our paper. We are using a glossy fine art paper. It is the Burrita FB. And then here's the ICC profile that we're going to download. You're gonna to have to select your printer. Mine is the Epson and I have the P900. And I'm gonna download the profile here. And then what I like to do is I like to take it out of my downloads, unpack it. And so here is the ICC profile. And you wanna go into your library, into your color sync profiles and you just want to drag this profile into your um, into your profiles there. This is the photograph that I'm just going to do a test with. So we want our to bring our photograph up. You want to do all your Photoshop work and have it ready for printing. One of the things you're going to get in your ICC profile. From Hannah Muley here, uh, they do a really good job. They include a sheet, and in this sheet, it shows you what your settings are gonna be to uh, print on this uh, Beretta FB paper. So it, uh, 
outlines everything right here. Your rendering intent, black point compensation needs to be chosen, which is there. Your rendering intent needs to be relative color metric. You need to uh, have it on Photoshop manages colors. And of course, the printer profile needs to be RB Burrita paper. Um, the other thing is in your media settings, in your printer driver settings, you need to have a, you need to pick the paper, uh, a luster photo paper, which is matches these settings. And then they suggest super photo, uh, suggest, uh, super photo 5760 by 1440 and your color management off. So yeah, Hannah Muley does a really good job and includes all this information for you and just tells you how to set it up. And then you get your photograph here. You go down to print. And so you pick your Burita FB paper, uh, relative color metric, black point compensation is on. And again here, Photoshop manages colors, not printer manages colors you want. That's an important one. And then in your print settings, you choose the size of paper, which is 13 by 19. And then in your printer settings, right here, your media type has to be ultra premium photo luster paper. And now your quality is super photo 5760. You save all that and then you make sure your print is uh, in the center in the paper and then you just hit print and you're off to go. Wow, that's a pretty nice print. This is the Hannah Muley uh, Fine Art Burrita Fiber Base uh, paper. It is a lovely paper. It is just gorgeous. Super deep blacks, really nice highlights. It is uh, just a nice, nice print. This is from a 5x7 negative on Delta 100. So, yeah, I will have a look at this and uh, this will definitely be one of the considerations for paper that I'm going to print these big prints at. I really like this. It's, it's a, it is a nice print and the paper is just feels great and um, see the picture has come to life now, you know, it was on the computer screen. Uh, before and now this whole thing has just really finalized and has come to life. Love it. I hope this video has helped you in your decision of whether you're going to print or not. I mean, you, there's all kinds of choices. I mean, you can go to a lab and get, uh, you know, you, you can get prints done at a lab. Printing's not cheap. I mean, the printer is expensive. You know, this printer was, 14 or $1,500. Paper's not cheap, ink is not cheap, but then again, what, what is cheap now in photography? Where camera bodies are $5,000 and a 70 to 200 lens is $3,500 and photography is just expensive now. It's not cheap anymore. But there are cheaper versions of printers you can get. You can also print smaller, but I really encourage you to print your work live with it, lay it out. I think it's going to elevate your photography and take your photography to the next level. Hope you liked this episode. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and everybody have a great new year. More YouTube videos coming this year for sure. I'm gonna put a big push into doing more YouTube videos because when I do YouTube videos, I get to do work for myself, which really excites me. And you have all made it happen as well. So have a great year of photography, and I will see you in the next one soon. Cheers.